Hey, so I'm Sophie Line, and this is Stefan Carlson. He's a director and curator here at Arzen Allen, and we're going to show you the next section of the collection. This is the World War II section with Swedish vehicles that we had produced and used during the Second World War. And we have a lot of interesting vehicles and stuff standing behind Absolutely. us. You can see just a fraction of it here. So let's go take a look at some more of these vehicles. So not to interrupt these two gentlemen in their work, but let's talk a little bit about this vehicle. Yeah, we have here a um, sort of tankette. In Sweden, we call it Stridsvang. A tank model 37. Okay. We bought 48 of them from uh, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic today. Um, a CKD design that was put together in Sweden. Uh, so it was not a licensed production. So they, they moved the production from Czech Republic to Sweden mm. and built them here with Swedish engine, Swedish uh, armor plating, etc. But um, everything is uh, from the original design, used as a, a tank, even if it's, it's not a tank uh, with two machine guns. Hmm. Uh, so that's what, what we had in 1938-39 when the Second World War broke out. We also had the armored car, which is uh, a box on a lorry. <laughs> uh, it's not that much of an armored car, but uh, it's better than nothing. So they, they try to, to do things that could protect at least uh, a bit. But uh, if you compare to other designs, that's not a very good design. Ah, what made it so not very good? Well, it's only loose mounted plates on a truck base. Uh, so it's, uh, well, it's a homemade invention ah. if you compare to something more reliable like what we have next to us. Okay. So if we compare to this one, an armored car made by Landswerk in 1939, four wheel drive, four wheel suspension, four wheel steering with a crew of six. Oh. Two at the front, one driver, one machine gun, two at the rear, one driver, one machine gun, and two in the turret, commander and gunner. Wow. So this was the perfect scout car to find the enemy and then reverse in case of emergency. So you could drive in both directions, equal speed. That's awesome. That, that's like a function that I hadn't ever really seen or heard about until seeing some of the Swedish designs. The driver in the front, driver in the back type of this is an interesting theme that we see and it continues to repeat through design coming up through the years. Yeah, and if you, if you look at uh, German vehicles from, from uh, the Second World War, there were a few uh, armored cars that later had drivers at both ends. Yeah. And you also find some other French designs from 1950s, 60s with a similar, and you, it, it comes back once in a while, but it's not too often. Yeah. They were exported to Denmark in 1939, but the order was canceled when the bro uh, war broke out. So we kept uh, most of um, the production line in Sweden and Denmark only received three of them. What did they end up doing with them? In Denmark? Yeah. They were used and I think they were confiscated by the Germans when they in invaded, but then they just disappeared. Oh, okay. Later on in the 19, late 1950s, we sold some of these to Dominican Republic, where they used them in the 1960s. And were, how effective were they from, from any review of their experience at that time? In Dominican Republic in 1960s, they were not that good anymore because development of other weapons had gone too far. But during the Second World War, they would have been absolutely fantastic. Gotcha. So, not did, did you have to discount the sort of IRL power creep that comes up? I mean, thing shows up again in the 1960s. It's more of a modern, more of a modern uh, combat scene. But back in the day when they were first designed, with what they were looking at, what they were needed for. Pretty effective. Yeah, and they were well of ahead of the, the design at mm. that time. It was uh, quite futuristic uh, with a lot of 
uh, interesting uh, design features. What are some of the more like futuristic design features on this one that really set it ahead? Yeah, with um, you have the the four wheel steering and the independent uh, wheel suspension engine in the middle mm -hmm. instead of having in one end. So uh, there are things that you can then find on later vehicles. Gotcha. What well. does having the engine in the middle do that would, was considered really effective or like ahead of its time in design? That was because you wanted to have the, the drivers to be able to look out at the rear. So you had mm -hmm. to put the engine elsewhere. So it improves visibility or accessibility of yeah. things for the crew. Yeah. Gotcha. That's cool. Very nice. So at first, at first time when I was walking through this museum, it was a cursory look at some things. And this thing stood out instantly to me as unique. I immediately became obsessed. The second you go to read anything further about it on the information tablet, it gets more and more and more and more interesting. So tell us about some of the features on this thing that are wicked cool. That you don't think would be that. Well, at the front, you probably think you would find an engine. Yeah. Valid. Sure. And um, <clears throat> you have the wheels. Cars, and they have engines and wheels. So. And you have the supporting wheels on the side. And you have the wheels at the rear. But there are different angles. So, hmm. 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 It's almost as though, hmm. Yeah, steering wheel at the front and, and steering wheel at the rear. Ah, that's unique but, for an automobile. What is this? But. Oh boy. So seated here between, wow. Is that another engine? Another wow, engine. what's that? <laughs> so, <laughs> what is this? This is a German Tempo Vidal Geländewagen from 19, late 1930s, um, imported to Sweden. And at the front, you have one engine for the front wheels. Okay. And at the rear, you have another engine for the rear wheels. Okay, so now... So you have um, this engine and driving, everything is one power unit okay. for the rear. And you have the same, but twisted at the front end. So in theory and in practice, you can use front engine or rear engine right. or both. Right. Two stroke engine with 19 horsepower, oh. 19. <laughs> so you have a car with 19 plus 19 horsepower to transport six people and an anti-tank gun at the rear. Okay. So it's a huge power. Absolute powerhouse here, yeah. yes. All 19 and, horses. And of course with four wheel steering. Right, so now we know the what. The next question begs why? Yeah. Um, Maybe it was a bit easier for the German designers to build a four-wheel drive vehicle like this. There's nothing about this seems easy in design. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. And all I know is I would drive this to work every day. If I had either chance, this is my new obsession. But I mean, how many, how many of these were made? Quite a few, quite a few, and they, they were, well, they were not so popular because they were, were I can't a bit, bit of unreliable with the four-wheel steering. Unreliable four-wheel steering. With the four-wheel steering, and as you can see with this fantastic <laughs> bar protecting the crew if you flip over. Yes, it looks it's, really, really stable. It's uh, absolutely uh, terrible to drive and... Uh, Dangerous. So you take your lives in your own hands with the yes, tempo. Yes, it's dangerous. Okay. Dangerous. But it's a fantastic design. And they still made up a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. I keep wanting to ask why, but like every single know. every single statement that you've had an explanation keeps me wondering why. But why? But not this one. Yeah. Not this one. It's a